Today, we're diving into one of the most exciting EV hot hatches of the year, the BYD Dolphin Surf. Stylish, practical, and tech savvy, this car represents a new wave in affordable electric mobility. And let me tell you, at a price tag, including Maltese government incentives of 10,500 euros out of the showroom, that's enough definitely to tickle your fancy. But is this the right EV for you? Well, that's what we find out today. Now, I want to start this review talking about what I believe is one of the most important components in vehicles nowadays, the high voltage battery. You might not consider this during your purchase, but when I tell you that the battery is worth one third to one half the cost of the vehicle, and it's definitely worth giving it some attention and comparing it with other electric vehicles because they are not all the same. Now, BYD make their own batteries. They started off as a battery maker, and inside or underneath this car is the BYD Blade Battery, a unique battery design that also incorporates itself into the chassis, giving the structural rigidity to the vehicle. Now, you get two choices a smaller 30 kilowatt hour available in the active trim or the middle and top tier boost and comfort get a larger 43 kilowatt hour battery now all of these batteries are lfp that's an important consideration lithium iron phosphate different to a battery chemistry called ncm nickel cobalt manganese or nca nickel cobalt aluminum chemistries which were sort of being phased out. This LFP design is definitely the way forward, mostly because it offers much longer charge cycles. Charge cycles being how many times you can charge and discharge this battery before it starts to lose its capacity. LFP lasts three to five times longer than traditional NCM batteries, a definite plus. Now, I've spoken in detail about the Blade battery in previous reviews on the channel, talking about it in my BYD Atto 3 review, the C review and even the C line review. So do check them out below for more information. Let's talk about the battery cooling system, another important consideration which again varies from one vehicle to another. Now, BYD in their Blade battery in the Dolphin, Atto 3 and other models like the Seal and Sea Lion utilize the state-of-the-art liquid cooling solution. However, for the Dolphin Surf, they have not disclosed what cooling system is being employed. Now, it's quite rare when you look at the cars in this price point to include a liquid cooling solution based on the competition we've seen. So I will assume that they haven't done so here. Having said that, BYD's unique blade design, where the battery cells are nearly one meter in length, allows them to dissipate heat a lot better than the competition, even just without the additional cooling system. That is a definite plus for this vehicle. Now, encapsulating that BYD blade battery is the ePlatform 3.0, a BYD developed architecture which essentially allows them to release so many electric vehicles in such a short period of time. It's also a very safe architecture with nearly 70% high strength steel. The platform thus allows for a flat floor inside the vehicle and it definitely maximizes the interior space for the occupant, something we'll be looking at in my driving video coming up next on the channel. So make sure you subscribe with the notification bell for that one. Now, under the hood or beneath the chassis, the BYD Dolphin Surf offers a standard permanent magnet electric motor, but you do get one of two choices. The base and mid tier variant, your active and boost, come with an 87 horsepower electric motor. It is only in the comfort that you get the 155 horsepower electric motor, which is the strongest or most powerful in its class. With 0 to 100 kilometer per hour times of just around nine seconds. Now, this motor design is quite unique from BYD. We have seen it on the channel before. It is a unique eight in one design, which is incorporating the electric motor, reducer, charger, DC converter, 
high voltage power distribution box, battery management controller, vehicle control unit, and the motor controller, all into one very concise package. It's one of the ways BYD are able to reduce the cost of their vehicles to the point where they are. Now, it might sound like a very complicated system, but have the reassurance that there are literally millions of these electric motors already on the roads in other BYD vehicles. So let me tell you about charging. First, I want to point out something quite unique, I would say. You know how I said the charger is found at the front of the vehicle, doubling up as the electric motor as well? Well, look where BYD have placed their charge port. Practically within a few centimeters of the charger. Now, the charger is actually always found at the front of the vehicle, but the charge port in other cars we've seen sometimes found at the back. That means the automakers are running those high voltage expensive cables through the car, in this case being very, very short. So it's another testament to the BYD design. So how long does it take to charge this car? Well, there's two battery size options, as we said. The smaller battery, 30 kWh, charges in 3.5 hours on an 11 kW three-phase supply. This means if you're charging on the public network, which is three-phase, or if you have access to three-phase at home or at the office, and you can charge in 3.5 hours, 4.5 hours with the larger battery. That's if you have three phase. If you're gonna be charging a car on a single phase supply, then in Malta with our limited 40 amp supply, you're probably looking at a 3.7 kilowatt charger or home or box, which I suggest you install. There, the charging times are 10 hours for the small battery, 14 hours for the bigger battery, but the car also has a DC CCS standard rapid charging port. This means the car can be charged at 85 kilowatts. So let's say you live in an apartment and don't have access to charging. I want to rely solely on the public network, but don't want to wait for the slower AC chargers. And you can charge this car on DC in 20 to 25 minutes from 30 to 80%. So it's a sort of weekly um, 20 minute stop to charge the car. So how much range can you expect from the car? Well, that differs depending on the trim level. Your base level variant, your active trim, gets us 220 kilometers WLTP range. Boost actually gets the most amount of range with 322 kilometers WLTP. The top of the line comfort trim, that's the one I have, 310 kilometers. Now these are WLTP combined. What does combined mean? Well, combined combines city driving, where you don't use a lot of power, with highway driving, where you use a lot of power. Which means, in a city-like environment, or a Malta-like environment, where I have no highways, and therefore using low power, these ranges can actually go a lot further, and the car, on a city driving can get that boost level variant over 500 kilometers on a single charger. And that sounds like a lot, and it's definitely something I'm going to be testing out in the real world in my driving video. So again, make sure you're subscribed because that one comes out next. So that's all about the tech of the BYD Dolphin Surf. Perhaps you already own a BYD vehicle. Let us know your experience in the comment section down below. All that's left for me, guys, is to say thank you to Maverick behind the camera, Gazan, Zamit, and BYD Malta for their support with today's review. And as always, you know the drill. Subscribe, like, merch available in the link down below. But as always, I hope I've convinced you that the future is electric.